Yeah. 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 Y
units? Uh, we're looking at uh, approximately, uh, and the, the final uh, number hasn't hasn't came in, but it will be between 50 and 55 units, and I'll have that number uh, more locked in by by the following week. Right. And they'll all be. I'm sorry. That's four four buildings. will be 55, 50, 55 throughout. That's correct. Spread through. The four yes. Yeah, and they'll all be high energy efficient build. Uh, 14 half seater type units, uh, Energy Star rated equipment won't be in there. They'll all be high end uh, apartments. Yes. The, um, <clears throat> the the fourth building is that the building is behind the it is, hotel. Yeah. It's kind of attached, but mm -hmm. so it's not really you don't consider it part of the hotel. Then. It's not for this project, although it's it is attached to it, but it is a separate address, so it will be a it'll be a, so it's considered a four four building project. But the, <clears throat> the the eight million is for all is inclusive. That's correct. Structurally sound. Where, uh, especially the uh, old Decatur apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, has that been checked out? Or are we confident that these are structurally sound and safe? Yes. The uh, an engineer did did assess the project or the building after it was uh, after the tornado did hit it. Uh, and at that time, it was structurally sound, and we have uh, actually had the state come in there several different occasions, and we've all done walkthroughs on the building. Uh, tomorrow, in fact, we're actually uh, putting a temporary roof on it uh, through through some of the state funding that the IHCD had allowed did allow for us. Uh, so tomorrow, you'll actually notice a temporary roof going on there to secure it through the winter time. Um, funding typically, um, as you know, probably the uh, November first is the deadline. Uh, Typically, it's the end of March, first of, uh, or I'm sorry, the end of February, the first of March is typically when they award uh, the projects. Um, and it tip, and we're probably looking more around the end of uh, 2013 to the beginning of 2014 before we actually are able to start uh, on construction of the buildings. Realistically, um, we're actually in, in within. Uh, we're actually going to try to uh, seek some additional funding to go ahead and do a permanent structure on the roof as well. We uh, went ahead and submitted some paperwork within the last couple of days for that as well, too, uh, for, a temper, for a permanent roof for the uh, sites of the Murdy Cape The, uh, <coughs> the delay from getting notice in early spring to when you might begin Construction to the end of the end of the year is really for what purpose? Well, two purposes. Um, they'll be gathering equity partners, uh, which um, our consultant typically has a list of that he uses that we use for act, uh, equity partners. But the biggest the biggest part of it is it's going to be uh, writing contracts, getting general con contractors lined up uh, through the whole bid process. Uh, so that takes a little time. Question, yeah, when you say this is senior housing, um, is there income level requirements there, on that? There is. Um, there actually, uh, and I'm not real. I'm not real privy to that, but I know it's actually a 60-40 ratio where you, I believe, and Brian, you might be able to answer that better than I am. 40 sounds correct. Right. Yeah, I think it's 60-40 is the. Uh, so when you say 60 40 uh, uh, local uh, median income right okay yeah. any other questions from council gary did you want to have anything to add no, um i'd invite mike from the abatement committee that this went to um they're really asking for 10 year uh, abatement um, on real estate and um, I was present when the mayor uh, spoke to all of the councilmen that were on the committee um, in conference calls I believe they were all in support um, supporting this project as, as much as they wanted to support the other project uh, and not treat one project differently than the other the other one was granted an abatement at the last council meeting, I think, and Blake can 
uh, the, like you want us to be on behalf yeah, of the we, committee. We decided as a committee that you're doing 10 years just the same way. I guess you guys are supporting points. Yeah. In the state, yeah. So yeah. Um, we wanted to give each one a fair shot. Um, we did make it known that if the project does not go through, there will be no abatement granted to the property owner. Correct. Uh, so we, I guess, avoid it that way. Unanimous. The, the, the committee. Brian, did you have anything yet? I, I just think it's a, it's a great project to, to, to have here in downtown. It's wonderful that we have this opportunity, and uh, Main Street's been helping out as much as uh, we possibly can with, with Isaac uh, and uh, the rest of his partners there. Um, those three buildings, or four buildings, I should say, especially the old YMCA, with it sitting there since ever since I have taken the job empty. Uh, the Decatur Apartments to see what you know what has happened since the, the tornado. Um, having this opportunity to, to really not only refresh those buildings but even add more housing to the downtown and senior housing at that is a it's just yes we're in full support of everything we can do to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Larson? I believe that's that's all I have. Okay. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council. I will entertain a motion for uh, passage of resolution 2012-9. I'll make a motion to pass resolution 2012-9. I will second that. I just want to clarify it is for a 10-year tax payment of real property. Um, the value is estimated at $8 million and the stipulation in addition is that if the project does not go forward, the tax payment is uh, is is uh, the drop. Okay, absolutely. Thank you, Glenn. <coughs> All those, please. Uh, Blake. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Daryl. Yes. Jamie. Yes. So passed. Second item on the agenda is the uh, cooperative purchasing resolution 2012-10. Scott Chastain was going to speak to this. Scott is at another uh, meeting this evening, Area 9 uh, meeting, and I believe for sales. And uh, Mr. Chris Stevens is going to speak on his behalf. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. As I, we mentioned in the October 1st meeting, the fire chief has been pursuing or uh, investigating the use of a uh, cooperative agreement for procuring goods and services. Uh, he mentioned two at the meeting specifically, one being the Houston Galveston Area Council, uh, the other being the Florida State uh, Sheriff's Associations, both of which have um, uh, cooperative buying agreements that have allowed them to reduce their cost in procuring uh, goods and services. At that time, the council had voted that they would allow him to, or not voted, but uh, agreed with him moving forward with uh, investigating that further and entering into a contract with one of those agencies, or uh, at least determining if it would be a viable option. Uh, statutorily in Indiana, in order for any governmental unit to enter into a interlocal, what's called an interlocal cooperative agreement, it's necessary that that unit authorized by either resolution or ordinance uh, the entity to move forward in that contractual obligation. Uh, so what we've done here is put together this resolution that addresses the need for the uh, for the procurement, why the city is interested in moving forward, um, and the authorization of this body to allow the, the mayor and, and Chief Chastain to move forward with the next step of the project, which would be uh, actually entering into a contract with HGAC, which is the Houston Galveston Area Council, uh, and then pricing out items and that sort of thing. So it's basically a, a multi step process, the first step being the authorization necessary uh, by this board. <coughs> is there a membership fee to that? Or is no, there is. there obligation? No, uh, for the, the contracts that I've reviewed online don't indicate any sort of fee or additional cost to the governmental entities. It will only be as we, you know, as we determine what we're going to buy, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, well, I have spoke with, 
with Chief Chastain, and he has been in contact with representatives from the Houston Galveston Area Council, and they will be sending him a formalized uh, cooperative agreement contract, um, which he anticipates getting in advance of next month's meeting so that I can review it and determine the legality of it uh, and advise the council for it. Several steps. This is authorizing them to take the next one, which allows them to actually begin to determine what pieces of equipment, what prices are, and so forth. The decision to buy a particular piece is still the next step. That would still be the final step. Yes. Yeah. So we still have some. Yeah. We're there. You're still. You're still very early on in this process. All, all you were basically uh, doing at this point is authorizing the next step of entering into a cooperative agreement, and that's indicating this will give us the opportunity to purchase from there. Yes. It doesn't bind us. No, there's nothing. From what I've seen of the contracts that I've reviewed to date. I see nothing binding the city to go that route. And and the, and actually, if we decide that the price is too high, we can still go elsewhere, or uh, if we decide we don't have enough dollars, we can wait until another year. Correct. If we have to. Correct. That's what I understood. That's what I thought, but I want to clear for the record. Certainly. Maybe a dumb question. I don't know. Uh, why enter into a contract, then? If, if this really doesn't bind us to anything. Well, what you're entering into is what's called it is the actual interlocal or cooperative agreement. It's two governmental entities. The, the Houston Galveston Area Council is actually its own political subdivision organized under the laws of the state of Texas. So it would be no different than if, uh, if Westport were to say not want to do some type of services that Greensboro provides. And Westport came to Greensburg and said, we would like to enter into this agreement by which Greensburg provides sanitary services to the city of Westport, to the town of Westport. You would still need to enter into an interlocal cooperative agreement as a formalized contractual document. But prior to entering into that, statutorily, you have to have authorization from the body uh, that is entering into the contract. So it's not, it's not a contract per se, it's an agreement to pursue uh, basically these mutual beneficial uh, arrangements. It's awkward. It really is. It, it makes little sense on one on the other hand. What it, what it prevents is uh, an executive doing something and getting out ahead of where the community is. So <clears throat> even though we have an opportunity to go back, this and just removes it one, one step back to say, is this really what we want to do? And we're saying yes. I th I think yeah. My that that's correct. That's basically where so it's where you stand. it does seem awkward because we're not. But I guess yeah. well, well that's and it's the dis the distinction, if I may, uh, without rambling too much, is um, what you're sort of contemplating is what it, I would consider to be a contract in a traditional term, which is. You agree to one thing, I agree to something. If we don't have a meeting of the minds, then there's no contractual obligation. And and you know, if you fail to meet your end of the bargain, then you know I may have some recourse. This isn't a traditional contract in that way. It is uh, more of a mutual understanding agreement, um, whereas they are, they are acknowledging that they really are a true and accurate, you know, legally established entity. And you are, you know, acknowledging that you really are a true and accurate legal entity, and that the two of you are, are willing to have a meeting to determine if there is some mutual. We're agreeing to agree. We're agreeing to agree. For lack of a better term. Yeah. I guess the bottom line is, uh, <coughs> Chief Chastine seems to think that uh, we could save the city thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars. So sense. I think it's uh, well worth a shot. And what I've proposed here is just is simply the precursor resolution necessary to move forward with that. Okay. Any other comments, questions from the council? Anyone from the audience? Entertain a motion to pass resolution 2012-10. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? 
roll call vote. Uh, Bridget? Here. Yes. Jim? Yes. Blake? Yes. Glenn? Yes. So passed. Thank you, Council. That's all that's on the agenda tonight. Anything else from the Council? From the audience? Entertain a motion for adjournment? Thank you.